Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to be doing my final CPU upgrade on my Mac Pro 5.1, which was a 4.1. It's a 2009 dual CPU 4.1, which I then firmware updated to a 5.1. Uh, I originally installed 5660s in it. That was one of my first Mac Pro upgrade videos done, I don't know, quite a while ago now. It's got 98,000 views. Um, and I think I was one of the first to do that online and then people definitely beat me with their production values and whatnot, but anyway, and got way more views, but I think I was the first, if not close to the first. Uh, but anyway, the 2009 model is trickier because you don't have lidded CPUs and you don't have the nice little clamps that they have on the 2010 and 2012 Mac Pro models. Instead, you have to just put the CPU in there and then you gotta get that, that damn heat sink on there just right and the pressure has to be just right. I had to do some modifications because when I did it, I put it in with the heat spreader on. I did not have delitted CPUs. Now this company, DQ Upgrade, was nice enough to give me two free 5690s. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I don't think I ever would have spent the money myself to go from 5680s, 3.33 gigahertz, to 5690s. It's just not going to be that big of a speed increase, but it should be a marginal increase, and these are the fastest CPUs you can put in your Mac Pro 5.1. So why not do it, right? So these are delitted. Uh, my CPUs in there right now, the 5680s, are lidded. So there is a height difference. And uh, I originally modified my heat sinks to the, the little connector on there. I modified them so that they could have a little more leeway to sit up a little higher. I don't know if I really needed to do that. I've seen people say since then that they didn't bother doing that. And that does make the install quite a bit trickier. And the other thing is you just, you know, with the 2010, you put in the CPU, you put on your thermal paste, and then you put the little locking door down, and that's basically got the right pressure on your CPU. Instead, with the 2009 model, you're using the heat sink as the pressure on the CPU to spread that thermal paste and to get all your RAM chips to mount. If it's not perfectly even, and you don't have the right amount of thermal paste on there and the right amount of pressure, you might not see all your RAM mount. And I had that issue last time I did this upgrade and I had to take out the 5680s, redo the whole install, and it worked the second time around. But I was sweating a little bit. So I'm really hoping <laughs> this is gonna be an easier upgrade because I've done this twice before. They're 5690s as fast as we can go. So let's get to the install. Okay, so here's our CPU tray removed from the Mac Pro. Again, this is a dual CPU system. And on the right, we have CPU A, heatsink A, and on the left, CPU B. And each CPU has its own four rows of RAM. Xeon processors use triple memory channels, which means they can access three RAM chips at once. So you really only want to fill up the first three slots for bay one and the first three slots for CPU two. And that will get you your best memory performance. If you go stick another RAM chip in each of the last slots in the fourth slot, you will then slow down your memory performance and your Geekbench score will go down. So now I'm gonna remove heatsink A. And uh, when you remove the 2009 heatsink, the CPU is going to stick to the bottom of the heatsink because of the thermal paste. If you're doing a 2010, you have that clamp holding down the CPU. So it will take a little more force to remove the heatsink. But we're doing the 2009, so what's going to happen is my CPU is going to be stuck to the bottom of the heatsink. And as you can see, I'm doing sort of a little crisscross pattern going from one screw to the next. I probably could have just unscrewed them all the way on the first try, but I kind of went around and did them a little more gradual. 
the screws stay in the heat sink, they will not fall out of there. So you don't have to worry about flipping the heat sink over. Now I'm going to pull out all three RAM sticks for CPU A, just to have them out of my way. Um, CPU B, they're behind it, so you don't have to pull them out of there. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the modification that I did to my heat sink. There's a power connector that goes from the heat sink to the logic board here. So I'd have a little more slack when I put on lidded CPUs, but now I'm putting on delidded CPUs. So I don't need that slack anymore, but I am stuck with the clips permanently have been modified. So normally if you were doing this for the first time, you would just lift up and the heat sink would completely disconnect from the CPU board. But for me, you see I'm reaching under there. I have to unplug the connector because I removed the clips that held it to the heat sink. So if I were to do this all again, I probably would not have done that modification because I think other people have done it with lidded CPUs and it still was connecting. Here you see the CPU is stuck to the bottom of the heat sink. So I'm just going to give the CPU a little twist and off it comes. And as you can see, it's got the old thermal paste on it. Kind of nasty. It's a good idea to put new thermal paste on your CPUs every once in a while, maybe once a year. So now I'm going to clean off the old thermal paste on the heat sink. And I'm using a guitar pick just to get the bulky, chunky stuff off first. This stuff is very greasy. Uh, it's some form of grease. I'm not sure what it is. Who knows if it's highly toxic or not? I don't know. Um, but anyway, got the bulk of it off. Then we're going to use the chem pad, which is just rubbing alcohol to get the remainder off, get it nice and clean. And I'm going to use another little chamois cloth. You want to make sure it's lint free and grease free. Just a nice, clean, shiny surface. So the other thing I'm going to do, because I'm using delidded CPUs now, is I'm going to remove a little piece of thermal pad I had on there for the sensors, because when you use lidded CPUs, your thermal pad, the original one, is not going to reach the sensors, and you could burn out your logic board. So I had to add thermal pads, and you can see that they were actually touching those sensors. So now that I'm not using lidded CPUs anymore, I can remove that and go back to the original thermal pad that's on there. And I gave it one more wipe down just to have it nice and tidy. Now we'll move on to installing the CPU. Okay, so we're gonna remove the CPU out of its packaging. We can skip ahead here. So as you can see, these were not brand new processors without lids on them. They were lidded processors that have been delidded. And I gotta say, they're not super shiny. Anyway, we're just going for it here. And as you can see, there's two little indents on the CPU. That's where you line it up to drop it in. Make sure you're lining up the two indents. Okay, so you can see a huge amount of dust that has piled up next to the heat sensors. And the reality is, it's like, I'm not cleaning that up until after I get the CPU back in the socket like I have it now. You would not want to go dust your board without the CPU in there because there's a good chance some of that dust is going to fall into the CPU socket. And that could just be an absolute nightmare. You also want to make sure when you're removing these processors that you check the CPU socket. Make sure nothing like old thermal paste has fallen down into the socket and then you go put the new CPU down on there and guess what? You got problems. So the other thing is, you know, lucky for me, I kept these little spacers in my desk drawer with the original CPUs that I removed from the Mac Pro the first time I did the update. So obviously you don't need those spacers if you're putting a lidded CPU in, but seeing as I'm putting delidded CPUs, I need that spacer sitting on top. And they have the same little indent like the CPU, so you know exactly which way to put it on top. Okay, so now we got it all cleaned up, and I'm going to apply the thermal paste. And on Intel's website, if you look up Xeon processors, they say to do it in a line, because as you can see, the processor 
is actually a rectangle. It's not a square. So you don't put a P-shaped dot in the middle. You put a line across the processor, even if it has the integrated heat spreader on it, the lid. So one more thing I want to talk about is the Northbridge processor, which is something I wasn't really that familiar with, but there it is, the arrows pointing at it. You see the heat sink, and you see how it's held down. Those are two plastic spring-loaded pins. And what people say is they eventually wear out and they pop out of their hole and then the heat sink comes loose and basically you're screwed. So it's not a bad idea when you go to do this upgrade to also find new pins, replacement pins. And it's, it's kind of a bigger install. You have to flip the whole tray over and remove the silver bottom of the tray to be able to get at these pins and use needle nose pliers. I mean, there's videos on this, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But the fact is, is yes, you can open up the north bridge, put new thermal paste in there, and put new pins to hold it down. Because eventually, from heat, these pins could wear out, pop up, and then your Mac Pro is not going to be booting until you fix it. And the north bridge is sort of the center communicator to the CPUs, the PCI slots, and the RAM. So without north bridge, you got no bridge. And it also runs hotter than the CPUs. So it's not a bad idea to put some new thermal paste on there, which I did not do. Okay, so I connected the connector of the heat sink first, and now I'm easing the heat sink back down uh, if you don't have a loose connector, you just want to put it in straight down. You don't want to do it at an angle. I have to kind of go in at an angle because I'm already pre-wired. Then you want to do a crisscross pattern, screwing in the screws tighter and tighter. And eventually you won't be able to turn the screw anymore. And then you can just give it a nice snug tightening at the end there. You don't really have to worry about over tightening when you're using delitted CPUs like you do have to worry about it when you're using lidded CPUs. So the process is the same. I'm not going to bother showing the whole install of the second CPU. I did exactly the same thing that I did with the first and we're tightening it down, doing the crisscross pattern, and then we're going to put it in and boot up and see what we got. Sorry for the shaky camera work here, but there was my open core boot screen. So we are booting folks after installing two 5690s into Big Sur, running open core 0.7.7. And what we got is a kick in the ass. One of my RAM chips is not showing up. The row on the left is CPU A and the row on the right is CPU B. So I'm missing my third RAM chip there and slot seven. Um, yeah, so this sucks. So I took the logic board back out and removed the CPU from CPU B slot and look, there's a little dust bunny in the socket. Not cool. So I got my little blower tool and got it out of there without having to touch the socket myself. So one cool thing I learned after having to do this multiple times is that I don't have to disconnect the heat sink. If you're like me and you used a lidded CPU on your first upgrade on a 2009 only Mac Pro and you removed the heat sink connectors from its housing so that it's now a loose wire, um, it's loose enough so that you can just stand up the heat sink and I put something under it to keep it sort of flat because you have very little slack. But the reality is I don't have to try and disconnect the connector from the heat sink to the logic board. I can leave it connected and there's enough leeway for me to stand up the heat sink. So I thought, okay, I had a dust bunny in there. I'm going to put the CPU back in and I'll be good and all my RAM will show up. But as it turns out, that was possibly not the problem because once it was clean, I still did not have all sticks of RAM showing up. And then I opened it up yet again and look what I noticed. One of the gold contacts on the bottom of the CPU is not gold, it's gray. So as it turns out, I had a bum CPU, which I returned. 
and they sent me another set of two. And I gotta say, the second set was much shinier and cleaner looking than the first set. So I'm putting in CPU B yet again. And, and as you can see, CPU B's indents are not in the same place as CPU A. They're reversed. So you gotta make sure you're lining up those indents on the chip to match the logic board. Okay, moment of the truth. Do we get the boot chime and do we not get little, sorry for the handheld, little error lights. We'll show up in here if there's a memory problem. Wait, where am I? Yeah. So far so good. We're booting. And no memory lights went on. It would have lit up by now. So I stole this photo from the internet and this poor bastard has six memory lights on. So don't know what's going on for him. I only had one memory light on and you see it right away. When you hear the boot chime, all of a sudden these things light up. Now, the one thing I should have checked, which I didn't, was to see if the CPU light was on. I did not check that and I should have. There's one error light for CPU A and for CPU B. So I boot it up and bingo, all my RAM now shows up. This seems to happen to me every time I do this install, I have an issue with one RAM stick. But this time it turned out to be the CPU because I returned the CPUs, I got two new ones and everything mounted the way it should. All the RAM shows up and uh, I am now good to go going from my lidded 5680s to delidded 5690s. So on the left, we have the 5680s, and on the right, we have the 5690s, squeaking out a little bit of an increase. Nothing to write home about, really. Um, are you going to see the difference in your day-to-day? -day? You're probably not going to notice the difference too much. But uh, hey, it is faster. And what do you expect? You're going from 3.33 gigahertz to 3.46 gigahertz. And in Cinebench, you can see that the 5690, again, beat the 5680 by a tiny margin. Um, now, why they show the 5650 in the single core being faster than a 5690, I have no idea it's showing like it's much faster, which is really odd because that's the original chip I had in my Mac Pro. That was the first upgrade I did was the 5650. And you can see down below number six on the left there is a 5650 and it's quite a bit slower than the 5690 and the 5680, as it should be. Why it's on the top there saying it's blazing fast, I have no idea. Okay, thanks for watching. We did it. 5690s are in. Anybody want a pair of 5680s? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you on the next Mac Sound Solutions video. Video, video.